So last week I talked a little bit about maintaining the user's viewing experience when a sticky set, a sticky element is collapsed. I wanted to follow up with a somewhat related topic where we can maintain the same user experience when content is actually being added above the view the viewport. And what you'll actually see here is that my scroll bar is slowly shrinking. And that's because we're actually adding content above the viewport, right? You can see it's getting scrolled down automatically. Now, uh, to my surprise, Firefox and Chrome actually create this user experience for you out of the box, meaning I'm not actually doing anything to maintain this scroll offset. Um, you'd see some console logging here in order to account for that. Um, the same thing for is if we're using an overflow container as opposed to the window. You'll see if I scroll down here, um, the offset of my scroll now is maintained even though content, as you can see by the scroll bar, is being added to the top of the viewport. And again, Chrome and Firefox just do this for you. Uh, Safari, on the other hand, doesn't do this for us, so we have to do it programmatically. So let me refresh here. Uh, and what you'll see is that as I scroll down here, um, you can see here that I'm logging the fact that I'm actually scrolling in order to maintain the current offset. Now, unfortunately, Safari can't seem to render and scroll at the same time fast enough to prevent this sort of jank. Uh, but that's only when you're on the window element. If we scroll back to the top and we switch over to the overflow container, what you'll see is that if I scroll down here, right now we're getting seamless uh, updating of the offset of this overflow container, such that the user experience is maintained even though we're adding content above the top fold of the viewport. Um, and again, you can see here that uh, I'm scrolling programmatically in order to maintain this offset. Uh, this also works in Edge, but Edge also gets a little bit of a jank. It's a slightly different kind of jank. It's like, it has like some sort of half pixel jank. Anyway, let's take a look at the code to see what's going on here. Um, essentially, the, the layout here is very simple. simple. I have a div, and that div is going to be our one of our viewports. Um, and it's either constrained or it's not constrained. If it's not constrained, this is just a regular block div uh, and it allows the window to render all the data. If, it's, if the demo type is container as opposed to window, we're going to be constrained, which just means that this has a height and an overflow auto. So it, we're going to use this as the viewport. Now I call this out because the getting the scroll offsets and the height, so the scroll top and the scroll height of a, of a div element is slightly different than doing it on the window or the document. Uh, so um, I've tried to abstract those changes out so that ultimately what we can do is use the same algorithm uh, in both cases, which is uh, essentially step one, you get the current scroll conditions prior to the new content. Step two, you add the new content and then force Angular to reconcile the new view model with the DOM so that we add the new DOM elements. Then we check the scroll conditions after the new content and essentially we take the pre and post scroll conditions we check the delta between those and then we update the scroll settings to account for that new delta. So let's take a look at this. Uh, so first we get the scroll height and the scroll offset. The scroll height is the amount of scroll that, an, that a container can have and the scroll offset is the, the, current, um, the current scroll it is, is using. Then we're going to add a new news item to our view model. Now Angular doesn't automatically add that uh, to the DOM until there is a digest. So what we have to do is use our change detector ref to ask Angular to detect changes. We'll essentially take this updated view model, reconcile it with the DOM, and add our new content to the render document object model. At that point, we can get the post content scroll conditions. In this case, we're getting the scroll offset. Now the cool thing, again, I mentioned that Firefox and Chrome actually do this for you which means that the pre-scroll offset and the post-scroll offset in Firefox and Chrome will automatically be different because Chrome and Firefox are adjusting the scroll offset to create a more pleasant user experience, which means that we only need to care if the pre- and post-scroll offsets are the same, which means that the browser didn't do anything automatically for us. In that case, we get the new scroll height we take the delta between the previous scroll height and the new scroll height, which essentially tells us the height of the new content that was injected. And then we want to set the scroll top based on that delta. And again, I'm abstracting all of these little DOM access methods uh, into other methods so that we can obfuscate the changes or so that we can encapsulate the changes. So for example here, um, to get the scroll height, if the demo type is a container, meaning we're using that overflow element, 
we can just grab the, the div scroll height. Whereas if we're using the demo type of window, uh, we use this sort of cascading approach to check various elements for their various heights. Um, this is taken from this JavaScript info page. Uh, to be honest, I don't know how important this is. This may account for really old browsers that, uh, that don't need to be uh, accounted for these days. Uh, apologies, I don't know, so I'm just grabbing that and using it as is. Um, but then you can see to get the scroll top, right, if, this is a, if we're using the overflow container, I can just grab the scroll top. If I'm on the window, I can get the page Y offset. So again, I'm just trying to encapsulate the uh, DOM access and manipulation methods based on whether or not it's like a, an embedded element or if it's the window itself. Um, and then setting the scroll top, again, if we're using the overflow container, I can simply just set the scroll top based on the delta, or if it's the window, I can use the scroll by method. And again, um, it's this one, at least in Safari, that can't quite do it fast enough to, uh, to avoid that jank, right? If we jump back here and we've switched to window and I scroll down, let's go up into like the middle. Uh, you can see that I'm maintaining the same content, but I'm getting that flash of the scrolled up content before I have a chance to programmatically scroll the user down. Um, now, in a news feed, this looks ridiculous when you're adding something every 500 milliseconds. Uh, if this were a normal app and you're occasionally adding content above the viewport, uh, then you probably wouldn't even notice this jank. So I think, I think the approach still applies. Uh, this demo just happens to not showcase it in the most elegant way. Um, but anyway, uh, just a quick follow-up from last week and uh, just a, if nothing else, a mental note to myself for the next time I need to do this, which is, to be honest, uh, not very often.